Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video we are going to continue implementing the enemy AI behavior. Basically we'll add the chase and the attack state so the enemy can chase now. And if we are too close, he will start shooting these uh, projectiles. So in the next video we are going to add the death and the damage states as well. For now we can't kill the enemy or hit it. But as you can see, it's pretty cool to make enemies like this with few uh, simple steps so without any further ado let's uh, jump right into it so this is what we left off from the previous video we've added our enemy and now he has two states an idle state and a patrol state so in this video we are going to add two states a chase state and an attack one basically we can add a run animation and that's gonna be our chase state so under this folder and under the animations one let's go ahead and use the rifle run because our enemy has the rifle then let's go ahead and change the name so I'm gonna call it chase state then in order to use this state we need to add few transitions so our enemy can chase whether he's in the idle state or in the patrol state that's why we need to make transition from the patrol state to the chase state and from the idle state to the chase state and then to control this transition we need to add a parameter so under the parameters tab let's go ahead and add another boolean and let's call it is chasing then we can select the transition and let's add the condition so when we change the boolean is chasing to true our enemy will switch to the chase state and make sure to remove has exit time the same thing for this one let's go ahead and use the same condition and remove has exit time as well and now in order to change this boolean we need to check whether the player is in a certain range so we can calculate the distance between the player and the enemy using vector3.distance and then we can check if that distance is less than 10 we can change this boolean to true so that the enemy switches to the chase state and to do that first of all make sure to tag the player so that we can access the transform or the position so make sure to change the tag of the player to the player1 and now we need to open up the patrol behavior script and the idle behavior script so let's go ahead and open up this script so first of all we need to add a reference to the player so let's go ahead and declare transform and let's call it player then we can go to the onStateEnter function and let's go ahead and initialize it using player equals and let's use game object dot find object with tag and let's pass in the player tag and because we need the transform let's use dot transform now we can go under this update or on state update function which is called over and over again when the state is active so down here we can calculate the distance so let's declare a float and let's call it distance and we can use vector 3 dot distance so we need to give it the two positions so let's give it the enemy position which we can access using the animator component using animator dot transform dot position and the second parameter let's pass in the player position using player dot position and then we can go over here and check if the distance is less than 10 in that case we can switch to the chase state using if distance less than 10 or let's go ahead and add a variable up here and it's gonna be a float and let's call it chase range I'm gonna give it the default value 10 then down here we can check if the distance is less than the chase range in such case we can switch to the chase state using animator dot set boolean so the boolean is called is chasing make sure to spell it right and we need to change it to true and basically we need to do the same thing when the player is in the idle state so we need to calculate the distance and check if it's less than the chase range so I'm gonna copy these lines of code and let's paste them under the idle behavior script so make sure to add it under the on state update so this function is called over and over again and the same thing we need to add this variable so let's go up here we need the player transform using transform player and we need the float chase range and I'm gonna give it the same value 10 and to access the player let's go ahead and use the same line of code so I'm gonna copy this and paste it under the onStateEnter 
now we can save the script and I think I have made a mistake yeah uh, this chase is with a lower C let's go ahead and save it and as you can see our enemy switches directly to the chase state that's because we are too close so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move the FPS controller so by default our enemy is idle and if we go too close to him as you can see he's in the run state or in the chase state we need to set it to loop time and add the uh, logic so let's go ahead and select the animation and under the animation tab let's go ahead and set it to loop time and hit apply and let's go ahead and add another behavior script to this chase state and let's call it chase behavior and let's open it up in visual studio so i'm gonna uncommon these three methods and let's make the enemy chase after the player and to do that first of all we need to add the namespace unity engine.ai and let's declare the nav mesh agent variable using nav mesh agent and let's call it agent we can use agent equals animator dot get component and the component is called nav mesh agent also we need a reference to the player so that we can chase so let's declare transform player and the same thing we can access it using find object with tag player equals game object dot find object with tag and it's called player dot transform now we can use agent dot set destination and we can set the player position so we need to do that in the on state update using agent dot set destination and let's pass in the player position using player dot position and down here we can check if the player is too close in that case we can switch to the attack state so let's go ahead and copy all of these lines of code so basically we need to calculate the distance and let's go ahead and paste it under the chase state after we calculate the distance we need to check if the distance is less than uh, 8 for example or 7 in that case we need to switch to the attack state by changing a boolean parameter we didn't add that yet so let's call it is attacking and we need to set it to true let's save the script and go back into unity and let's add the attack state so we have this animation let's go ahead and use it as the attack state the same thing drag in the rifle single shot animation and let's call it attack state then we need to add a transition so let's make transition from the chase state to the attack one so here I'm gonna add another parameter and let's use a boolean and make sure to write the same name so we've called the parameter is attacking then we can select the transition and let's go ahead and use the condition is attacking true maybe we need to go back to the chase state so when the player is too far we need to go back to the chase state so I'm gonna make transition to the chase state and as a parameter let's use is attacking false we didn't add a script to this state yet so we can add it using add behavior and let's call it attack behavior then let's go ahead and open it up so first of all we need to make sure to stop the enemy when he's in the attack state so when he's shooting we need to make sure that he's in the same place so in order to stop it we can use the on state exit under this chase behavior so when we exit the chase behavior we can stop the enemy using agent dot set destination and let's use his current position using agent dot transform dot position and let's copy all of these lines of code so I want to check under this attack behavior script if the player is too far in that case we need to switch back to the chase state so I'm gonna remove this line of code we just need to calculate the distance and the same thing let's add the player reference and under the on state update let's go ahead and check if the player is too far using if the distance is greater than 20 in that case let's go ahead and change the boolean is attacking to false now let's save the script and test the game again so by default the enemy is idle and if we are close he will switch to the chase state and if we are too close as you can see he's attacking but he's not facing the player we need to make sure that the enemy looks at the player and if we go too far from him he will switch back to the chase state and yeah now he's chasing so let's go ahead and fix these problems or it's just one problem so first of all let's go ahead and open up the attack behavior script so when the enemy is attacking we need to make sure that he's facing the player and we can simply use the look at built-in function so let's use animator dot transform and we have here this look at function 
we need to give it the player and that's going to fix the problem also I want to change some of the values for example I want to increase the attack range let's change it to 10 and let's go ahead and increase the chase range as well so I'm gonna change it to 15 make sure to change it under the patrol and the idle behavior script so our enemy is idle by default and if we go close to him as you can see he's chasing we could also change the speed of the agent and if we are too close as you can see he's attacking and he's facing the player all the time when he's in the attack state now we need to add the bullet you could use the right cast to make sure that the enemy is actually shooting at the player but to make things funny let's go ahead and use a projectile but first of all we need to create a projectile object so I'm gonna right click in the hierarchy and let's use a sphere I'm gonna call it projectile then let's go ahead and reset the transform I'm gonna double click on it I want to change the scale so let's change it to 0.2 also let's change the material so under this materials folder I'm gonna use one of these materials so let's use the red one and in order to apply physics to it let's go ahead and add a rigid body component and I want to increase the mass to 2 then let's go ahead and create a prefab out of it so let's drag it under the assets folder so to make sure that the enemy can shoot I'm gonna use the animation event basically we can add a function that we can call it at a specific keyframe of this shoot animation but first of all we need to create a script so I'm gonna right click create C sharp script and let's call it enemy then we need to attach it to the enemy which has the animator component and let's go ahead and open it up so let's create a method using public so that we can access it void and let's call it attack or shoot but first of all let's go ahead and add a reference to the projectile object using public game object projectile then under this method let's go ahead and use instantiate we are going to instantiate the projectile and for the position we can add another variable and it's gonna be the point from where we are going to instantiate the projectile let's use public transform and I'm gonna call it projectile point and let's pass in the position as the second parameter using projectile point dot position and for the rotation let's use quaternion dot identity but also we need to apply a force to this projectile basically we can access the rigid body component using dot get component rigid body and let's reference it using rigid body I'm gonna call it RB basically we need to push it forward using RB dot add force and let's pass in the forward vector using transform dot forward and let's multiply it by 30 and we need to specify the force type or the force mode and I'm gonna use force mode dot impulse also let's go ahead and push it upward as well using rb dot add force and let's use the transform dot up vector and I'm gonna multiply it by 7 and the same thing let's use the same force mode so let's drag in this prefab also let's go ahead and add the projectile point basically I'm gonna create an empty game object under this rifle and put it over here so let's right click create empty and let's call it projectile point as well then I'm gonna move it a little bit forward and let's reference it and finally we need to call the shoot function that we've created under this enemy script basically we can select the animation which is this one and we can call the function at a specific keyframe but it's not gonna work we need to get this out of this object so I'm gonna use ctrl D and let's go ahead and use it under this animator so instead of using the attack animation under this object make sure to drag in this one so that we can add the animation event so let's go ahead and open up the animation window using window animation then animation make sure that the enemy is selected and we can select the animation as you can see these animations are read only and this one we can edit it so we can add an animation event so we can go to the scene view and see which keyframe so I'm gonna instantiate the projectile at this keyframe you could simply select this icon and from here we can select the function that we've just created which is called shoot now let's hit play so let's go towards the enemy and when he's attacking we have these projectiles 
So you could add some particle effects as well. We could also damage the player. We are going to add that later on. But as you can see, we have our enemy shooting these uh, projectiles. But if we go far away from him, he will go back to the chase state. So I want to add some particle effects as well. So let's go ahead and create a projectile script using right click create C sharp script and let's call it projectile. But first of all, I want to create another folder for our enemy. So let's right click create folder and let's call it enemy AI. Then I'm going to put all of these scripts and let's put them under this folder to make things more organized. Then let's go ahead and attach the projectile script to this projectile object. So let's drag in the script and let's open it up. I'm going to get rid of the start and the update method. Basically, we'll use the on collision enter one. So when our projectile hits something, we can create a particle effect. But first of all, let's go ahead and add a reference to it using public game object and let's call it impact effect. And down here, we can use the instantiate method using instantiate the impact effect and let's use the projectile position using transform dot position and let's use quaternion dot identity also we want to remove this effect after uh, two seconds so let's add a reference to it using game object and let's call it impact then we can destroy it after two seconds using the destroy method let's pass in the impact effect and the amount of time so I'm gonna use two seconds also we can play some kind of uh, explosion sound so I'm gonna use the audio manager script if you didn't watch uh, the video about the audio manager script you can check it out so I'm gonna use find object of type audio manager dot play and I have an explosion sound and finally we need to get rid of the uh, projectile itself using destroy game object and I think that's pretty much it Let's go back under the hierarchy. Let's select the projectile object. We need to add a reference to the impact effect. Basically, I have these effects under this folder. And let's use this one. So I'm going to drag it in here. So our enemy is able to shoot now. And we can't kill it at this point. In the next video, we are going to add the other states like uh, uh, the damage and the death states. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. Also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any one of my next videos. And I will see you in the next one.